Over the next three weeks, I want to walk you through what is probably the most powerful tool in my artist arsenal to be able to make change and improvements in the way that I work and move my way of working closer to my goal. And that is completing master copies, but not only doing the master copy itself, but also using that to inform the way that I work on my original pieces. So today I'm going to walk you through my process for why I choose the master studies that I choose and how I prep to begin. Next week, I'm going to show you what the master study itself looks like. And the following week, I will show you my original painting that is based on what I learned from that experience. And I'm going to be focusing on an artist that is exciting to a lot of people, <laughs> certainly to me, and that is John Singer Sargent. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in and I will show you my process. So what gave me the idea to do this? Well, first and foremost, master studies are just such an insanely useful exercise. Whether you want to learn classical techniques from the old masters or whether you want to really understand what some of your favorite contemporary painters are doing to achieve the magical things <laughs> that they are able to get into their paintings, master studies are fantastic because they are not a surface level analysis like you can produce when you are simply looking at a painting and talking about it. The actual act of producing a master study forces you to go through the literal motions of painters before you. And I think that's how we can really stand on their shoulders. One thing, however, that I think lacking in a lot of people's master study practice is understanding how to use that master study to inform your own work. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. So this process began when I was looking through some of my reference photos that I have in my reference library. Um, I've talked about Howard Lyons reference packs quite a few times before, and this image that I have on the right was one where right away, I had a feeling that this could make a really beautiful image. I thought to myself, there's something about this that kind of reminds me of a sergeant. Maybe not the way that she's sitting, the composition doesn't evoke a particular sergeant piece to me, but there was something about, you know, the more classical wardrobe, some of the flesh tones I'm already starting to see. And so I pulled up a big Pinterest board of some of my favorite sergeant paintings. And from there, I took a look to see if any seemed to have the right overall vibe <laughs> to match this reference for lack of a more specific term. I wasn't sure exactly what I was looking for, I might have been looking for something with a similar pose or expression or composition, but I stopped when I saw this image that I have here in the middle. Um, this was something that Susan Lyon posted on her Instagram a while back when she visited the Morgan Library, and right away, I could start to see some of the similarities in the flesh tones. So I could see how even though I don't really see a lot of pinks in her flesh tones in this iteration of this image, I could see some of the greens. By contrast, I could see some of those pinks start to stand out, and I could tell that if I just upped the vibrancy on this reference, I think I could get something that was pretty close to this. So I'm gonna go ahead today and I'm going to make a master study of this image. And next time, you're gonna see me go ahead and do a similar study for this particular reference. And we will see where this goes from there. Maybe I will produce a larger piece after that using that portrait version as a preliminary study for this. All right, so you might be wondering what the image on the left is all about then. So I had a couple of issues with this image. Um, most specifically, I didn't have a panel that matched this particular aspect ratio. So I wanted to go ahead and find a full size high res version of this same painting um, that I could go ahead and crop according to the kind of panel I have. Um, so today I'm gonna to be working off of a square panel. So that is how I have this image cropped. Now from here, I need to go ahead and when I compare these two images, the coloration of the original photo of the painting that I saw is much closer to what I want to paint for this particular photo reference. So I need to go ahead and make some quick adjustments to get this closer to this. All right, so in Photoshop, I'm gonna go to filter and then 
camera raw filter. And I'm actually gonna pull this image over just so I can see it a little bit more clearly. All right, so we have the camera raw filter pulled up here and I'm not gonna lie, there's a ton about Photoshop that I just do not know and that is okay. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start by using the auto function on the edit just to see what that does. All right, so this is quite a bit brighter, but it is still very warm. Um, so what I'm probably gonna do is drop the exposure down, probably just gonna drop it down to the starting point here. And I think what I want to adjust, let's go ahead and I'm just gonna start shifting this closer to blue. I'm not sure that I want to change the extent to which this tends toward green or magenta. So one thing I might do here is actually take down the vibrance and saturation until this is starting to look closer to the other image. By the way, if anybody is a Photoshop wizard and you know exactly how you could match the color harmony of this photo of this painting um, using, I mean, I, probably the camera raw filter, I tend to find this to be the most user-friendly, um, but if you have an, a really easy and foolproof way to do this that's really effective, I would love to hear it. All right, so going back. So this image, by the way, came off of the Morgan Library's website. One thing that I often like to do um, is to look at something like uh, Wikimedia Commons. That tends to be really helpful and in terms of getting a high res image that I can actually paint off of. All right, so already this is looking closer. That being said, I'm still not there. And one way I know is that this background is looking very magenta where it looks much more neutral. It looks like it's tending toward black um, in this particular image. So I'm gonna take a look at the color grading. Oh, I am really not excited about this prospect. Um, all right, taking the darks a little closer to green is helping. I kind of want to take the highlights a little closer to blue. That's a very subtle shift. Oh, I am not used to using this particular tool, so you're really watching me fiddle with this in real time. All right, so I wound up dialing back the reds a little bit and then boosting a little bit of the saturation on the greens. I'm specifically looking at this brush mark on the right side of the face and just how like a dingy teal, <laughs> I think that it looks. Um, and I'm seeing what I can do to actually match that. I'm also gonna take the blues in a little bit more of a blue direction. Interesting, okay. So this is a feature I haven't played with before. So you really are just seeing me play around with Photoshop until I get the result that I'm looking for. I still feel like I'm missing kind of like this little bit of blue gray that's up on the forehead off to the left there. But adjusting these areas I don't think is accomplishing what I want. Okay, let's see if I can take the mid-tones in that direction a little. Okay, that's too far because the cheeks are starting to look blue, frankly. That is starting to get closer. Let's see if that shadow adjustment was a whole lot very quickly. Okay, this is pretty close and I might honestly paint off of both of these images side by side just to make sure I'm mixing the color as accurately as I can. That being said, I can see how I can start to apply this to my photo reference. And this is looking much closer to the original image that I looked at. It's not perfect, but this should be a good starting point. All right, so I'm making sure that the aspect ratio that I have here in Photoshop is the same ratio that I have with my canvas. That way I can trust that the drawing should be able to match up completely and I won't wind up getting any strange distortions as I paint. Thank you so much for going with me along this full process. I know today is just a teaser of what's to come and I know the painting part is going to be really exciting. And at the same time, I know how big of a deal it is to go through these preliminary steps at the very beginning. 
to make sure that you have really thoughtfully chosen what you are painting for the master copy and what reference you're going to work off of for your original and to go ahead and put in the effort um, via typically Photoshop to make sure that you're set up for success, that your image is adjusted and calibrated accordingly. You see the color you want to paint. You have cropped it down to the correct aspect ratio to match your particular canvas that you're painting on. When you have all of these steps checked off, you are really setting yourself up for success so that you can focus on really trying to copy as purely as possible. And in doing so, really learn what it feels like to make these paintings with such mastery. All right, I am so excited to show you the full painting in next week's video. If you have any questions that you want me to address in going through that painting, please let me know in the comments below. Until next time, happy painting.